I'm sure most of you have asked yourself this question by now or at some point in the last couple of years, why is everything so messed up? Why is the world the way it is? What are we doing wrong? And we're going to talk about that today, being the first video on this channel. I wanted to start off with this documentary series that talks about all of the fundamental questions about life in hopes that we find an answer together. And this is our first chapter. No, let's call it our prologue. Today we're going to identify the areas I think we can work on as a society in order to build a better future. So we've been on this path for a long time, kind of blindfolded and arrogant, and we've just been heading full speed to our demise. And now we've stopped. We're forced to halt all of our efforts, all of our dreams out the window, everything that we've ever worked for gone. The stage has been reset around the world, and every country is dealing with this thing in a different way. Some have several waves, different medications could help. A vaccine is being invented at the time of this video and is almost completing testing. But until then we must remain distant and separated. The most basic of our instincts challenged. So how did we get here? Is this our own doing or is life being unfair and unjust? I've been wanting to do this series for about six years now, ever since I got the idea back in grad school. At first I thought, I'd shoot it as a narrative film, then as a mockumentary, which is basically a fictional or a narrative documentary. I forgot about it when I started teaching, and thought about it again during the Lebanese revolution that took place in October 2017. I couldn't really figure out a format for it until this YouTube channel. I've always wanted to talk about these topics, and I tried to incorporate them in my lectures and classes the best way I can, and as often as I can, and I always felt that we don't talk about these enough, or at least not in depth, not the important or crucial stuff, not in detail. I think asking and talking about the most unanswered questions about life is important. You know what happens when I die? Is there life on other planets? What is love? How does the universe work? How am I alive? Who or what am I? But where do we begin with this? How can we build a comprehensive picture about life when life is so infinite in its scale? More importantly, how do we govern our lives based on this image? What is clear, what is actually very certain, is that whatever we were doing and whatever we are doing now, we are doing very wrong. We are running blind, victims to our own upbringing and thieves of our own future and our children's. Decimating our planet, our cradle, our home. The only place in our system that weighs just right for us to stand on it. To walk, to run, that has the right breathable air for us to fill our lungs. The perfect distance from the sun to feel her warmth enough water to quench our thirst, spacious land to grow our food, kingdoms of species of all kinds, enough to keep you exploring for an entire lifetime. People of various personalities, skills, experiences, cultures and traditions, habits, strengths and weaknesses, virtues and vices, every page of history, every event, every battle, every kiss. As Carl Sagan once said, that's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was. And yet knowing this, feeling this, sometimes at least, hasn't stopped us from taking it for granted, from breaking it in half. And I want to clarify something that the earth is very old. Whatever we think we can do to it won't compare to what it's already been through. 
five mass extinctions, impacts of magnanimous proportions, ice ages, supervolcanoes, our home is no stranger to tragedy, to loss. We are. We are the species that can't reconcile with its own demise, for we are the only species that can even ponder it, to a certain extent. And so, we have chosen to ignore the truth, to look away, to postpone thinking about it for a while, to drown it in noise and distractions, an infinite cycle of realizations and denials, we are a species of amnesiacs, committing the same mistakes over and over due to our inability to see the truth, to agree upon it, to agree to disagree, to share it, to understand it, to act and change. Our collective history is almost like branches from a single bark, similar yet different containing a single truth with multiple faces. We are the problem, and that must be clear before we start off the series. Should we destroy the Earth tomorrow, in a blink of an eye, it'll come back. Our Earth is well acquainted with time. We aren't. Meaning, whatever we do in our lives, we do to ourselves, to our friends, to our families, and to our children. Should we continue down this path, the Earth can simply watch on and smile. The cosmos will laugh at our despair, our insignificance, our petty squabbles, our perceived self-importance. But now, today, every second of every minute, of every hour, we are given the chance to step back, to see the full picture, ask the most important questions, and seek out their answers. Now that we have stopped, our streets are empty, our skies are quiet, our friends and family are distanced from us separated and isolated. Now's the time to think, to look deeply within our hearts and ask ourselves, how did we get here? What are we doing wrong? In order to understand what lies ahead, what future we could have, we have to look back. We have to look within. We have to examine every memory, every book, every subject, until we reach the end, the final wall. We have to answer the most basic questions of ourselves, of the universe, of life. Why are we here? What is all this for? What is my purpose? Is there a purpose to all this? To do this, we must broaden our horizons to newer perspectives. Be prepared to see the world from a different lens, from several faces. We must look into science, religion, history, mathematics, we must use every research, every historical event, every behavior, every discovery, every miracle, analyze it and study it. We must come together for this task from every angle, from every field, and using the scientific method as our guide and our imagination as our final frontier. We must be ready to rid ourselves of preconceived notions or truths, belief systems, and egos. Personally, I believe there are five areas we can work on, five aspects of society that are wearing out and need to be reassessed. Religion, politics, the economy, education, and the self. These aren't final though. I think down the road we'll update them and perhaps rename and reorganize them, but they'll do for now. So why these topics? Why these subjects? Simply because each of them governs an aspect of our lives in some form or another, and each of them is intertwined, and they all affect one another in some way. Religion provides comfort and solitude, yet governs beliefs and therefore defines behaviors. It intertwines with politics, setting certain ideologies and creating expectations. Politics affects the economy and the self at the same time spilling over into education and upbringing. They're all tied together, and unfortunately, they're mostly all outdated, all over the world. Take our economy, for example. We're quickly running out of resources, the crash that's happening right now, the way we package and distribute, the way we consume. It's also a reflection of who we are, a starving species, hooked on dopamine and the rush of having more, wanting more, owning more. But it isn't our fault, is it? It is. And it isn't. It doesn't matter anyways. What matters is the future and our actions in the present that defines it. Our collective suffering isn't coincidental or divine created. It is something that we can control if we change these five aspects of our lives. 
We'll explore each of these topics in this series. In order to plan for the future, we must dig within and expand outward until we find the answer. But we must also be ready to encounter more questions. We must be ready for the long journey ahead that may never end. And we must decide on a point to turn back and search elsewhere, reach perhaps a new horizon, an ever receding wall away from us, the wall of forever. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I'm hoping to add more content to this series every Wednesday or every week. Hopefully I'll be able to upload more videos with your help, so please make sure to subscribe for new content, hit that notification button, share this video as much as you can amongst your friends and family, Check out my Udemy page for online courses. I have courses there for script writing and the Adobe software such as Premiere and After Effects. Also, don't forget to comment below and introduce yourself. Also, ask me any questions that might be on your mind. And thank you for watching.